As I was reading over things for the services, I came across an article that made reference to uh, a play called The Trial of Jesus by John Mansfield. And in the play, Pilate goes, or a, a centurion, the centurion goes to make a report to Pilate about the crucifixion. And when he's finished making the report, Pilate's wife calls the centurion over and says, is he really dead? Do you think he's dead? And the centurion responds, and this is my paraphrase, no, my lady, he's been set loose on the earth where no one can contain his truth. I wonder myself if the author of the play was thinking about the ending of the Gospel of Mark. It's an interesting ending. The last verse of our reading for today is what most scholars tend to think was the traditional original ending of the Gospel, not um, many of the things that were introduced perhaps later in later editions of the gospel as a way of resolving the tension of this ending. Listen to this ending. So they went out and fled for the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. What an ending. What a way for the story to end. Sure, most scholars agree with that, and sure, if you were there and read this and um, heard this story and had been following it closely and you, you get to that ending, then you think, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know the story. I've heard it before. Hold on. How did it get out if that's the ending? Well, I think that's Mark's point, and that's, that's what Mark is trying to do for us, is to say that this story has no real ending, but instead we continue to tell the story. We tell it. The women who fled from the tomb that day must have whispered it at first, perhaps to their closest friends, the ones they trusted the, mo the most, the disciples of Jesus, and then perhaps after that they told the disciples, and then after that it was, it was more and more. And Jesus meets them in Galilee, and then they tell others, and they tell others, and they tell others, and down through the generations and all of history, the story has been told over and over and over. But Mark's point is there. This is not something we take for granted. This is an amazing, terrifying event. They go to a tomb expecting to find it closed, and they walk away having met an angel and heard that he is not there, he has gone ahead to Galilee. He is risen. And here we are. We stand here on this day as those who continue to come to the empty tomb and to hear that story and to tell the good news. He is not dead, he is raised. Violence does not win. God's peace wins. Hope is not defeated. It is alive. Jesus is raised. And we do that when we come to this table where as part of the words that we speak and sing, we're not going to sing them in this service, but often we do, we introduce in the middle of that great thanksgiving prayer the words, great is the mystery of faith, and then we 
proclaim together in our singing, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we remind ourselves of the words of institution as we speak those and when we come to them we say for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the saving death and resurrection of the Lord. That's our task. What an ending Mark gives us because he reminds us in that ending that the story continues that we still have a role to play to continue to tell the story over and over and over again to continue to recite it to one another as a sign of God's hope and God's new life in the world no matter how much everybody else speaks death and despair the message of the gospel is hope joy. So let us continue to tell the story. 